You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. I'm speaking today on healthy decisions. At the start of the year, can you imagine making healthy decisions? A sales representative and an administrative clerk and their manager were walking to lunch when they found an antique oil lamp. As they rubbed it, out came a genie and they, he said to them, I'll give each of you just one wish. So the admin clerk said, me first, let me go first. I want to be in the Bahamas, in a speedboat with no care in the world. And poof, he was gone. And then the sales rep said, my turn next. I want to be in Hawaii, lying on a beach with my personal masseuse and the love of my life. Poof, he was gone. The genie turns to the manager, well, you're next. What's your, what's your wish? And he said, I want those two back in the office after lunch. If you find yourself in this situation, then make the decision to let your boss go first. (laughs) We make decisions every day, some that have the potential to make a big impact on our lives and others not so much. There are decisions that we make that affect just our lives, but then there are also decisions that we make that affect the people around us, like our family, our friends and our workmates and colleagues. You know, they actually say that an adult makes, on average, 35,000 decisions in one day. So from the moment that you wake up until you lay your head down to rest, you'll be making around 35,000 decisions. In the morning alone, we can make hundreds of decisions. The most important decision is when that alarm goes off, do I wake up or do I go back to sleep? (laughs) Do I have tea or coffee? Well, for me, that's a no-brainer. It's just a coffee. What to wear for the day? Do I take a jacket or not take a jacket? What do I make for breakfast? Do I take this lane when I drive this my way to the work? Do I take this route? Which There are so many decisions that you and I make on a daily basis. And being that we've just had New Year's Day, to make New Year's resolutions, that's a decision that some of us make. You know, a friend of mine years ago made the decision um, to brush their teeth every night. I thought that should have just been a good decision anyway. But they determined that they were going to brush their teeth every night. So every night they had to make that decision, am I going to brush my teeth or not? And I know the tooth fairy was watching them. I'm not sure if any of you have experienced this, but with clothes shopping, I've made some questionable (laughs) decisions and choices. And this has been the process in my head previously, not now, but previously. I really like that top and it looks, you know, if I just lost a few kilos, I know that top would look really good on me. So I go ahead and buy it. And do you know that I have family members that rejoice in looking through my wardrobe because they love seeing all the clothes that I have in there that still have the tags on them? Decisions. But I'm sure none of you are like that. Made up of those 35,000 decisions, researchers at Cornell University estimate we make 226.7 decisions based on food alone. And each decision, of course, carries certain consequences with it, whether they be good or bad, or in the case of food, healthy or unhealthy. So how do you and I make decisions? There are many different ways depending on what needs to be decided. It could be based on what we're feeling at the time. Or I really do want that another piece of chocolate, so I think I will. It may be based on the perception we have of the situation or the people involved. We could base our decisions on truth or what we read on the internet. We can make decisions impulsively, so we go with the first option because we're in a hurry. Making a decision so that it pleases everyone. We can delegate decisions, or we can even avoid making decisions, trying to put it off, especially if it's overwhelming or maybe too confronting. We can look at both sides of the situation, weigh the pros and cons, get out the spreadsheet, crunch the numbers. 
There are many different ways that you and I make decisions. And do any of these ways resonate with you this morning? When I was building my house, there was a day that I had to make all the decisions on what colours I wanted to have, the tiles, the carpet, the bricks, etc., etc. I had my mum with me and the lady who took us through the process was really helpful and very patient, showing me the different options and providing the necessary information needed to help me make the decisions. It took a long time and when I left with the samples given to me, I was pretty happy with the decisions that I had made. Isn't that what you and I need when making good and healthy decisions? Someone to lead us and guide us. John 16, 13 says this, But when He, the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will lead you and guide you into all the truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do that, that you lead us, that you guide us and that you are with us every step of the way. We can turn to you knowing that you will lead us into all truth, not just some truth, not just some sort of options, but all truth, because that's what you're good at doing, Holy Spirit, in our lives. We have the wonderful Holy Spirit. And in Psalm 119, 105, it says this, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. How? You may feel like you're at a crossroad. Which way do I go now? As you ask Holy Spirit, I know He will speak to you, give you the assurance and the truth that you need, because the Word of God is powerful. You may feel unsure, but His Word always brings comfort. His Word always brings direction and His Word always brings purpose and truth. And we this morning can rely on the wonderful Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth when making healthy decisions for our lives. You know, when you read about the lives of the men and the women in the Bible, gee, they had to make some decisions at times some with positive outcomes and some with not. Decisions that were life-changing and monumental. Decisions that weren't always easy and at times downright hard, but they wanted to follow God's instructions and His ways. Decisions that took time to make, and I'm sure at times caused them wavering. Can you, I mean, in your own life, I'm sure you can imagine you've got Ooh, option one, option two, what do I do? And there's that wavering that can go on when making decisions. I'm sure you can look back over your own life and see decisions that have had positive outcomes in your life, maybe giving something up like an unhealthy habit, decisions that have been life-changing, like potentially getting married, moving to another place, and of course, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. These are big moves, decisions that have been hard to make and decisions that have took time and prayer. So how can you and I make healthy decisions? And what does the Bible say to help us make healthy decisions? In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, it says this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. He will make your path straight. In the Passion Translation, verse 5 reads like this, Trust in the Lord completely. And do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on Him to guide you. And He will lead you in every decision you make. He will lead you in every decision you make. You are not alone this morning. The Holy Spirit is with you. You don't have to rely on your opinion, your perception. You just need to look to God. God, I trust in You alone. I acknowledge You alone in my life and I know You will lead me into all truth. This year, may our decisions reflect that we trust You, Lord God, in every situation we go through. Let it reflect that, mighty God. We trust you in every situation that we go through. And I want to look at a mighty man of God who I love. 
Can anyone guess who I might be talking about? Someone that I love. I've spoken on him before. I'm just testing your memory banks. Ah, yes, I heard a cry in the wilderness. That's right, it was Caleb. (laughs) If we look at the life of Caleb, he definitely lived this truth and based his decisions on it. He trusted God not only in the good times, but in the bad times and the times of wandering. He didn't seek answers from his own understanding or opinions to work out a spiritual promise. He knew who God was and God definitely protected him on his life's journey. The decisions he made kept him on God's path for his life. We find this story in Numbers 13 and 14, where Moses sends out the 12 spies to look out to check out the land. And after exploring the land together, after seeing the same places, the same people, the same produce, they headed back to give the report to the people. I don't know what they would have discussed as they were making their way back to Moses and the people. Maybe they didn't say much at all. But if they did, I know Caleb would have had said, had said some encouraging words to them about the God that they serve. Yes, there would be challenges and decisions to be made, but he knew his God. And in Numbers 13, 27 to 30, this is what the men said. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quietened the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. Can you imagine Caleb listening to the men, hoping to hear the men give a good report of the land that they have just seen? And instead, he hears their language change. Instead, he hears about the people. He hears about their cities. He hears about their strength. What about the strength of God? What about the fact that he has given us this land? What about the fact that he has a place for us? Can you imagine him, his heart just dropping in hearing the other men's report? He had a decision to make. Do I follow the popular opinion or do I tell the truth? Despite what the crowds may think, despite what the other 10 spies may think, and I'm sure you can totally relate to this, standing up to the crowd is not an easy decision to make. He made a decision to tell the people that they could do it, not denying what he had seen but knowing that God would give them the strategies to overcome. That was a courageous decision. He trusted God. He acknowledged him and looked up to him to lead them and guide them. What was the outcome of his courageous decision? The people spoke of stoning him. Can you imagine Caleb thinking, oh, was that really a good decision to to make? I should have kept my mouth shut. But Caleb couldn't help himself. He had to use the truth to quieten their fear. Caleb confronted the people's fear with the encouraging truth, we can do it. He trusted in God and he knew that God was greater than the fear that the people were experiencing. He couldn't help but acknowledge God. You know, if anyone is this morning experiencing fear about making a decision or a decision that has already been made, I would just want you to know that God is with you. His love and His power is with you. He will bring clarity and peace into your mind. I know this to be true because this is the God that we serve. You don't need to fear. God is greater than the fear. But because God, because Caleb acknowledged God, God spoke up for him. And in Numbers 14, 24, says this, 
but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed followed me fully, I will bring him into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit it. Even though Caleb made that courageous and bold decision to stand up in front of all those people and quiet their fear, look what God did. Look what God did. He stood up and acknowledged him before Moses and the people. This is my man who fully fully trusts me. This is my servant. I can trust him because he trusts me. You and I can have a different spirit this morning. It's not a formula. All it is, is trusting in God and acknowledging Him in every step that we make and every healthy decision that we make. God, we trust and acknowledge You. We look to You because we know that You will lead us and guide us into all truth. Not only was Caleb blessed because of this decision, but his descendants were blessed as well. Let me tell you, the decisions that you make can have such an impact for the people coming after you. Not only your family, but your friends, your workmates, your colleagues. What what Trent said this morning, the seats on either side being filled, the decisions that you and I choose to make, knowing that we trust and acknowledge God, can have such an impact on the people around us. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've had to make a decision to stand up to the truth or something you believe in? Was it an easy decision to make? Let's face it, we all like to be accepted and liked. Finding that balance between people-pleasing and healthy decisions can be difficult. But Lord God, I trust you and may my decisions Reflect that. Caleb then had to wander with these people for 40 years. Can you imagine that? He had to make a decision to stay positive. And let me tell you, that would have been a continuous process. To stay positive in the wandering. Thank you. Keep trusting God because he still faced all the normal motions that you and I face. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where it was easy to focus on all the problems and the chaos around you? It's easy. It's it's a decision we have to make not to ignore the problems, but to stay positive and calm and work out the necessary solutions with God's guidance. I trust and acknowledge you, Lord, and I know you will make my path straight. He had to make a decision to get along with the people around him and not hold a grudge. They had talked about stoning him, but now he had to rise above this and his own feelings and get along with them. He had to make peace, forgive and work towards restoring those relationships. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where perhaps there's been a conflict in one of your relationships with a family member or a friend or there is a strain on your relationship? Even if it's not our fault, we have to make the decision to work towards healing, restoration and peace. I trust and acknowledge you, Lord, and I know you will make my path straight. He had to make a decision to hold on to God and His truth and His goodness. He trusted God and He clung to this truth all His life. It wasn't His decision to wander for 40 years, but it was now what He had to do. And he had to make the decision to keep holding on to God and trusting Him. You know, if people or situations bring heartache or problems into our lives, we might find ourselves questioning God's goodness or struggling to stay true to God and His promises in our lives or even blaming God for what we're going through. Getting a report from the doctor that wasn't expected can leave us with questions. Something that happens in a close relationship you have that leaves you feeling shocked and overwhelmed. Dealing dealing with the fallout of a decision that was made. But we need to align ourselves back to the truth of God's Word. May our decisions reflect that we trust you, Lord God, in every situation we go through. It's not easy, 
but I am determined to trust and hold on to the Lord God and to make healthy decisions. You know, Caleb made the decision not to do those things. He didn't blame God or question his goodness. Instead, he made the decision to continue to trust God and wait for the day he would walk into the promised land. I trust and acknowledge you, Lord, and I know you will make my path straight. God said about Caleb, he was a man with a different spirit, not because he was special, but he just made the decision to follow God fully and trust his word. So we've heard the story about Caleb and we may be left thinking, well, how did he do it? How did he make all those healthy decisions? How how can you and I practically make healthy decisions? Well, Psalm 119.66 says this, Teach me how to make good decisions, Lord, and give me revelation light, for I believe in your commands. Other translations say, teach me good judgment and knowledge. So what can we do? Number one, ask God. Teach me how to make healthy and good decisions. Your word says you will do that, so I believe you that, and I believe that you will show me. Good news is God knows us so well and He'll make it personal to each one of us. Lord God, teach us to make healthy decisions. We all need God to teach and show and guide us in making healthy decisions and teaching us good knowledge and judgment. When information is presented to us, help us to sort through it with your knowledge and your truth. You know, years ago, my brother bought a speedboat and decided to take us a water skiing. And I have to just acknowledge the fact that he was so patient with me. I was actually quite surprised. But anyway, he would... And he was so good at teaching me. Like, so he told me the process. You need to do this and then do this. And each time I fell down, he just would come back around, say, okay, perhaps just try it this way and would go through the process again. I reckon I did it about 10 times. Sometimes I fell down straight away. Other times I was able to get up more successfully. But he was just so patient in leading me through the process of teaching me how to water ski. Not that I've done it since then. But you know what? God is like that. He is so patient and He is so good and He will always help us when learning to make healthy decisions. He doesn't just say to Himself, oh, I'm just going to give them one more chance and if they can't get it right. No, He is with us every step of the way and will continue to lead us and guide us as we continue to trust and acknowledge Him. Teach me, Lord, to make good decisions. James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Number two, what can we do? Ask God for wisdom. Lord God, I need wisdom for the situation I'm facing so I can make a wise and healthy decision based on your truth and perception and not my own. Sometimes my perception is swayed by my emotions. Amen. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds. It shows no favouritism and is always sincere. Oh, God's wisdom is just beautiful. God's wisdom is for us. God's wisdom is pure and gentle. I definitely need God's wisdom in my life. It will not only help me to make decisions, but it'll show me how to respond in situations in a godly way and not in my human emotions. Proverbs 12:15 says, "The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who listens to counsel is wise." Number three, what can we do to make healthy decisions? Seek godly and wise counsel from those who know their God and His Word, who have also outworked trusting in God in the situations they have gone through. How can you and I make healthy decisions this morning? Ask God for His help and His wisdom. Teach me, Lord, to make healthy decisions. Seek godly counsel. And also trust in God and acknowledge Him. He will make your path straight. This year, may our decisions reflect that we trust You, Lord God, in every situation we go through. Amen. I just want to get you to stand so we can pray this morning.
Lord God, we just pray that at the start of this year, we are determined to trust You and acknowledge You in everything that we go through. And Lord God, we just want to bring You honour and praise and glory. And Lord God, we just know that as we ask You, You will help us this year to make healthy decisions for our lives and for our families. Lord God, we just acknowledge You. Lord God, we just trust in You. Lord God, You are such a good God and You lead us into all truth. You lead us into all wisdom and understanding and we just want to acknowledge You right now and say that we trust You this year and the decisions that we make will show and reflect that we trust and honour You, Lord God, to know what we need to do in our lives. In the Name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. You may take your seats. I'm so glad this morning that God made the decision to send His Son to come to earth and die on the cross and rise again for us. Because of that decision, we can now know God and have a relationship with Him. How? By making the decision to accept Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. And in Romans 10, 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. So this morning, if you don't know Jesus or online, if you don't know Jesus, I would love for you to make this great and healthy decision to follow Jesus. And I'll just get you to close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the first time or maybe again since a long time, we want to take this journey with you. And you can talk to Pastor Renu or myself after the service. Or if you're watching online, you can go to gc.org.au slash first steps. Well, guys, I just want to say that I just really am excited for this year to see what God is going to do in our hearts and our lives as we determine and continue to trust, acknowledge Him in helping us make healthy decisions. Bless you.